find the Word of God that covers your situation? That Word has brought faith because God said it. That's the reason it's called the prayer of faith. Today on The Believer's Voice of Victory, join Kenneth Copeland for a great study on how faith comes. Once you understand this, there's no stopping you from receiving, by faith, all that God has promised you. Now let's join Kenneth. Now then, let's go back again where we were in Mark chapter 11. This, now, now we've, we've learned that every one of us that have made Jesus the Lord of our lives, every one of us have faith. And it's the faith of God, and it's in us now. Now that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We talked about the fact that the Scripture talked about Abraham being not weak in faith, so you could have weak faith, but being strong in faith, and we know strong faith gives glory to God. So you can have weak faith, you could have strong faith, you could have uh, faith that's stagnant. Jesus talked to people that didn't have any faith. But now, after Jesus went to the cross and raised from the dead, the only people that he would say have no faith are the ones that have not yet accepted him as Lord and Savior. And there's a lot of religious people that have never done that because they don't have any understanding of it at all and think you just, you know, you just live out your life and when it's over, then they judge you and if you if you're good outweighs the bad, they'll let you in and if not, they don't. Ooh. Uh how much good you got going for you? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, all I want is justice. No, you don't. No, no. You do not want justice. You want grace, which is by faith. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You don't ever want justice. All right. Okay. So we know that this faith of God comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But that's what feeds it. You remember that Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now that's giving us some insight here into the fact that the, the spirit of man, the, the real person, the hidden man of the heart, Peter called him, that's the one that gets born again, not just forgiven. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, any man that is in Christ is a new creature. Remember we read earlier that um, created in Christ Jesus in Ephesians chapter 2, we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. In other words, He did it. When the Word of God came to you and you believed it, and you confess Jesus as Lord with your mouth, the Spirit of God did the same thing with you that He did with little Mary. Yes, the angel told her how this was going to work, that the Spirit of God would, would hover over her and a holy thing would be conceived in her womb. She said, be it done unto me as you have spoken. She believed it in her heart. She said it with her mouth. With her mouth. Yeah. Those were the words 
of God. They were the seed of the flesh of Jesus. And nine months later, that little baby was born in Bethlehem. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. One translation that I, I like, I really do like, the Word took upon itself flesh. Isn't that good? Now, the same thing happened to you and me. We heard the Word. Faith came. We believed it in our heart. We said it in our mouth, Jesus is Lord. I receive you, sir. Come into my heart. Like Gloria said, take my life and do something with it. Yeah. Well, he really did. <laughs> Amen. And I'm so glad. Glory to God. Well, the moment you and I heard that word, faith came. And we didn't reject it. When we accepted it, the Holy Spirit hovered over us Jesus said, you have to be born from above, yeah, right. born of the Spirit. Yes. For whatsoever thing is spirit is spirit, whatever is born of flesh yes. is flesh. Whatever is born of spirit is spirit, what's born of flesh is flesh. Yeah. Amen. 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 And that word that entered into your inner man, into your spirit being, what the scripture calls your heart. That's not your blood pump. You can't believe God with a, with a flesh muscle. Right. It's your spirit man. The reason it's called the heart because it's your core. That's where your life is. Amen. Right. And the spirit of God hovered over you. Thank you, Jesus. And those words became spirit. Glory to Dios. And there was born a new creature. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Exactly like Jesus. Yes. Born again of the Word of God. Not corruptible seed, but incorruptible. And the faith of God was in that seed. And it became yours. And you have the right. You have the command and you have the authority to use it as your own. Amen. And as I said um, at the beginning of this last Monday, that one of the first thing I noticed about, about Oral Roberts, my spiritual father, the first meeting I got in, he used his faith like, like a mechanic used a wrench. Amen. And he, and he, he said to me, we, we were, they, they had in those large meetings, they had what they call the invalid room and, the, and it was a smaller room with people that were ambulatory and couldn't manage a crowd at all. They came in those, that smaller room and um, then he would give an invitation out front and people would accept that invitation to come accept Jesus as Savior. And then he would he would talk with them for a moment and turn them over to, to uh, Brother Bob DeWeese, who was the associate uh, minister. And then he would leave there and come back into the invalid room to lay hands on all of them before he went back out to the main crowd and then they had the, the healing service. Well, they gave me the job <laughs> of going into that invalid room and listening to the message on the, on the sound system and, and outline his message. And then I had about uh, between five and 10 minutes before he got there that I was supposed to go back over the points that he preached and get them ready to have hands laid on them to remind them of so forth. And the first time, the very first time, I just finished doing that. He walked in the door. Well, of course, I, you know, I stepped back. And uh, stand up here, Sergeant, please. And so I, you know, I just stepped back over here out of the way. He's supposed to stand like this. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, excuse me. He was over here on this side. And he walked up there and he, he got me like this. <laughs> you're going to do the praying and you're going to do the laying on of hands. <laughs> you should have seen what was in that room. 
I could feel it. Yep. <laughs> I'm changing color here. <laughs> this is all going away, man. He laughed. He still got me by the coat. He said, he's laughing at me. He said, don't worry about it. He said, if you make a mistake, I'll be here. I'll fix it. <laughs> okay, that, at least that helps. <laughs> Amen. But now listen to what he said. This, this, this is just huge. Don't touch them till you're ready to release your faith. There's a point of release. Hmm. I heard him say this. He said, there comes a time, thanks, Sergio, when your faith must have a release. And then don't ever take it back. Amen. Once you've released it, and you stay in the Word, you search the Scriptures, you find the Word of God that covers your situation. And that's the answer to the prayer before you pray it. That's the reason it's called the prayer of faith. Because that Word has brought faith because God said it. He's already done it. It belongs to me. I'm a covenant man with Him. Amen. He's my Father. I'm named after him. Isn't that good? That's good. <laughs> Wasn't that good yesterday? Oh, that's so good. So, 2 Peter, well, in fact, turn over there. Let's, let's look at something concerning faith. This, this faith that we have from God, it's God's faith. So, if it's God's faith, then we need to be using it the way God said use it. It's His. He knows how it operates. Now, here, here you are in um, 2 Peter. Well, let's, let's, let's look again in, in, uh, in 1 Peter. We'll read that. We, we read that uh, in, uh, yesterday. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Now, 2 Peter chapter 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us. So everybody to whom Peter was writing this letter. Well, it's, isn't this letter good for us too? Isn't, isn't this the Word of God? Isn't it, God's no respecter of persons? Huh? Then he is saying, everybody that I'm writing this to that got born again over there in that first letter I wrote, I'm writing to you because you've got the same faith we have. The like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God. Now, if, if he hadn't put in there through the righteousness of God, then there might be, you know, some... But no, no have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God. God is righteous. God is just. God is faithful. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you got the same faith of Jesus. You got the same faith of James and John and Peter. And praise God. You didn't get a little dab of it either. You got the same measure. Now, it ought to grow. It can get weak from not having any food. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is a major factor in, in people that have faith failures. Grace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according, now get this, as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, where? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue or excellence. God has called us to excellence. 
whereby, whereby what? This excellent calling. Whereby are given unto us. Now these belong to you and me. Say it out loud. These are mine. These are mine. Given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Whoa. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now notice this. Beside this, beside those promises. Now the promises are yours. Amen. Let's, let's take a promise. We read 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now that's a precious promise. That's a precious thing. And there's no respecter of person there. You know, stealing a pencil or murder. Sin is sin. Some of you look at me like, you just get out and under the bus. <laughs> you ever hear, them, hear somebody say, well, you go to hell for lying just the same as you will for stealing. No, you don't go to hell for lying or stealing or killing. Jesus has already taken care of all of those. You go to hell for not accepting the, the Jesus as Lord. Rejecting that is the, rejecting Him is the sin that'll send you to hell. All the rest of it's been covered. Now, given to us exceeding great and precious promises, by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Verse 5, besides this, giving all diligence. Ooh, you mean I got to be diligent about this? You mean I, have to, I still have to watch what I say after two whole years? Well, let me ask you this. How's it working out for you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Genesis 1 1 started with words. Mm -hmm. Revelation ends with words. And all in the middle is words. So, yes, darling, <laughs> you, you have to pay attention diligently to what you say because it's very simple. The power of death and life are in the tongue. You can't get around it. Yeah. Satan is stuck with it and we're blessed with it. Yes, you can't change the system, but you can change the words. Right. Right. We have these promises. Yeah. We can say these promises. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Instead of, you know, I, I, can, I can read these things and, and I can say, isn't that marvelous? Yes. You say, yeah. Or I could have said, doesn't that thrill you to death? No! No, no, no. <laughs> no baby. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> well, I didn't mean it. And nobody, nothing in there said anything about meaning it. God said, your words are stout against me. Yes, sir. You're snared by the words of your mouth. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, diligence is in there. <laughs> right. 
add to your faith virtue. There's that excellence name again, word again. I, I was there at, at ORU, and by this time I had um, more than just a casual relationship with Brother Roberts because I was, I was not only part of the flight crew, now by this time I'm, I'm driving his car, and, and this, this lifelong relationship began. And uh, he said something that marked my life indelibly forever. He said, Jesus, now this word, this, this word virtue, add to your diligence, add to your faith, add to your faith. Now you, you have the faith and you're going to release, you're going you're to get on the word, you're going to find a promise and you're going to release your faith. That promise is mine and that's what I'm going to say. Yes. All right. Yes. You believe it in your heart and say it in your mouth. But you're going to have to add to it excellence. Hmm. And he said, Brother Robert said, Jesus' ministry was and is a ministry of excellence. And the word of God came from his excellent glory and said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Excellence of ministry. The word is divinely excellent. The integrity of this written word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. It's not only referring to Jesus, it's referring to the written Word. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. 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 That's right. He said, therefore, we must demand excellence. He said, we demand excellence of our students here at at, at or Roberts University, and he said, therefore, we must demand excellence of ourselves. And it really took hold of me. And I began then at, at God's, I, I just gave myself over to the Lord. I said, I humble myself. I give myself to this. And I'm, I'm asking you, according to Hebrews, the 11th and the 12th chapter, I, I to help me with this, to strip myself of sin and to strip myself of, of things that easily beset me. Get rid of it. Get it off of me. I, I desire and I, I receive this excellence of ministry. Excellence of ministry. And here's what the Lord taught me. You must become brutally honest with God. Brutally. I mean, not, yeah, Lord, I, yeah, I kind of think I did that. Come on. You're hedging. <laughs> yes, I did. No excuse, sir. Uh, Brother Jim, mm -hmm. I apologize. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait. Well, you, you see, the thing was, I was so tired. No, no, no. You just blew a good apology. <laughs> you just messed up a good repent. <laughs> All you needed to say was, brother, I love you and I apologize. I repent. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> brother Copeland, are you going to go to the meeting? No. <laughs> What's this long pause? Somebody's waiting for the excuse. Yes, yes, yes. You don't owe anybody an excuse. God said, don't go. Say, no. <laughs> then they say, why? I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you're not ready to be just brutally honest with God and with yourself, 
then you're not ready for miracles. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't take but about that long to get ready. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jesus said, with faith, you could tell a mountain to move and it would obey you. If obstacles stand in your way, it may be time to wake up your faith. The 10 Day Spiritual Action Plan for Faith That Can Move Mountains, the newest installment of the Kenneth Copeland Ministries Lifeline series, is here to help you grow your faith. With 10 video lessons with Kenneth or Gloria, fresh new worship songs, an all new Faith Scriptures CD by Kenneth, scripture cards for you to confess daily, and easy to follow written lessons. Renew your mind with God's Word and become strong and confident in the faith you have. Move the mountains of debt, sickness, bondage, or fear out of your life. Take 10 days and develop the unbeatable spirit of faith that can move mountains. Request your 10-day spiritual action plan for Faith That Can Move Mountains Lifeline Kit absolutely free. Take advantage of this free TV offer today by calling 800-600-7395 or visit kcm.org slash TV special. It's Kenneth and Gloria Copeland's heart to get the Word of God to you free of charge. This resource will help you develop the overcoming spirit of faith that moves mountains. Request your free Lifeline Kit today. As believers, we have a duty to vote. A vote in our elections is our seed that we reap from. So how do we know which candidate is good ground to sow into? Knowing where a candidate stands on these four areas will give you a clear picture of whether or not they stand for the Bible. Number one, what is their stance on life? Do they value the life of an unborn baby? Number two, moral law. That sounds like a broad point, but it encompasses their beliefs on homosexuality and marriage. Number three, judges. What kinds of leaders do they appoint? And number four, religious expression. Do they stand for freedom of speech even when it comes to public expression of religion? It's vitally important that we as Christians vote our values in the polls. Proverbs 14.34 tells us that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We have a responsibility to represent biblical values. If we don't bring our righteousness to the polls and to the voting booth, no one else will. This election year, vote and vote God. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland appreciate you watching. Go to kcm.org slash TV special for more word-based free teaching resources. Take hold of all God has for you in the great year. Next Sunday on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Right now, this nation, <laughs> glory to God, is getting operated on. She's going through some serious surgery right now. Amen. But you're going to like the way she turns out.